más tiempo. Utub. YouTube, how are we? Apologies for the slight delay in starting this brand new series. We've been uh, all hands on deck since coming back from Rome. If you missed the Rome vlog, it's one of my best, I think. It's up there with the Marbeas, the Ibifas. It's very good. I highly recommend you check out the vlog. But uh, since coming back from Rome, we've been all hands on deck transferring current clients to the new OneFit app, which is a, a brand new coaching software slash application that's uh, been set up by the guys at OneFit, which is fantastic. It's, it's very early stages, but what that app holds and possesses is uh, fantastic. It's gonna make our lives as coach and also client a hell of a lot easier. So, welcome to the new series, Mass Tiempo. See what I did there? Mass Tiempo is spelled M-A-S Tiempo, but Mass, add on an S. Mass Tiempo also stands for more time, but we're not gonna spell it M-O-R-E, what we're gonna spell it, M-A-W. I'm a maverick when I tell you. When I tell you I'm a maverick, I'm a maverick. So uh, essentially the goal of this eight month bolt, this natty bolt, we'll say natty, we'll come onto that shortly, but uh, I am natural in the sense that I'm not injecting anabolics anymore, but recent kind of research from Brad Schoenfeld et al has uh, highlighted that even users who have cycled off anabolics are at somewhat of an advantage, how much of a percentage that is, who knows, but we will call it natty. We're gonna start this eight month natty bulk. We kind of reverse engineering from the from the end goal, which is a photo shoot in 2024, ideally with uh, Bailey Studio, because he's, he's phenomenal. He's fantastic. So we've got an eight month gaining phase. The reason why we're doing it, a couple of guys asked me on TikTok is, I'm happy with the way I look, but I think coming off anabolics, going into a high rocks prep, which is like 75, 80% running, and then going into a, a, an Ibiza cut, I've lost a little bit of tissue and I want to regain that tissue in certain areas, my legs, my arms, my midsection, I really want to improve on. So we're going to do an eight month gaining phase and then we're going to do a photo, sh photo shoot prep, which I'm really excited for. I've never done a photo shoot before. Obviously got stage photos when I used to compete, but yeah, I'm excited to get some, some photos. So relax, sit back, enjoy the next eight months. It's going to be a bit, a bit of a, an additional challenge, an additional layer to this gaining phase now that I've been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. But uh, yeah, like I said, sit back and relax. We are now gonna go off to DexaScan UK, who have very kindly sorted me out over these next, however many uh, sessions we're gonna get in. Every eight weeks, we're gonna go and get a DexaScan to give you an insight into how much tissue and fat that I've been gaining. So every eight weeks, over the next eight months, we'll give you guys and girls an insight. Right, I'm gonna head into London now and uh, go and see Philip. Break it to me, how skinny am I? <laughs> how much tissue have I lost here? You really want to know? Yeah, I don't really mind to be honest. Okay, all right. So it's a baseline, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're not too concerned about what's gone before. No. But what, it, but what has gone before is you've lost about eight kilos in weight. Yeah, that's not too bad. Right. And it's all lean. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, there's your change in body fat. So yeah. just 300 grams. Yeah. So fat stayed about the same. Okay. Uh, but lean has dropped seven plus, seven and a half plus, okay, yeah, yeah. which is your eight. Um, so it could be, well, obviously probably a lot of water. Yeah, yeah. All right. So when did you come off the came off, Came off steroids last August completely. Right. No PCT, recovered in January. Started dieting in March for Ibiza. Okay. So yeah. Right. Yeah. So we see <coughs> a fair amount of bloat uh, mm. on steroids. Yeah. Um, and when they come off, we see a, a big, big drop in water. Anyway, sure. that, that's the difference. So today, um, similar to last time, your fat is around thirteen point eight kilos. Sure. So um, that's quite a you know that's what I call low fat, ten yeah. to fifteen kilos typically. So where do you, so you're bulking, yep. but do you want to keep an eye on this as well, on the fact that? Yeah, I'd ideally like to keep that within, you know, within a decent range. Kind of where it is, ideally. Especially now I'm natural, I think it's going to be more important to keep a, a better handle on that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Most certainly. So, um, your, 
just by way of comparison, Tom, mm -hmm. so 13.8 kilograms, I say 10 to 15 kilos is probably what I call low fat shirt sure. territory. Um, your fat for height is this number here, uh, 4.37. So your fat for height, it's a better number than body fat percentage, yeah. um, is around the, just under the 30th percentile okay. Okay, against 12,000 men. Okay. So your body fat, you, you carry less fat for your height than about 70%. Okay. But certainly, you know, if you're competing or something, you probably want to be down here. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that are probably closer to 10, 11. 10. Yeah, all right. Um, your lean for height is uh, this number here at 20.5. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be uh, still very good. You're still about the 75th percentile. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a good starting place. Perfect. You know, you've got you've got good muscle to start with. Yeah, yeah. You're here at about the 75th percentile. So anyone who's read Peter Atia's Outlive book, he wants all of his clients to be in the 75th percentile. Sure. So very good for muscle mass. Perfect. Uh, but be interesting to see how far you you, you get up here. Yeah, yeah. Look you know, if you get up here naturally, mm -hmm. then you know, we'd say that, okay, you, you've gained the muscle with less water, I would say. Yeah, 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 sure. And it'd be more of a oh, true, true, true gain. So good, yeah. good, uh, something to focus yeah, towards to focus as well. On. All right. Training. And you're going to come back every eight weeks or so? Eight weeks until yeah. the, yeah, yeah, that'd be See brilliant. Thank you so much. That's all right. No problem. Perfect. Okay. Amazing. All right. There you go. Okay. Okay. That's the widest the camp, the le... <laughs> That's the widest the lens can go. The camera lens can go. We're back from Tesco. We'll break down what we are going to be eating for this gaining phase, break it down to fats, carbohydrates, and protein. Some or most will lap, so fall into both categories. We'll start with protein. I am having quite good success at the moment in terms of reduced symptoms from just consuming fish and eggs. Not to say that I don't chuck in a bit of chicken here or there, but at the moment I'm predominantly eating fish and eggs and I'm enjoying it. Downside is it's quite expensive. I need to get myself to a fishmonger's because buying from Tesco is very expensive, but we have some prawns. So I'll be having the prawns for lunch. I'll be having some eggs. These are the farm eggs that I get, not from Tesco. Once you go farm eggs, you can't go back to, to regular eggs. I mentioned this on Instagram. It's like flying first class and going back to economy. It's very difficult. I haven't flown first class yet. So we've got, to top up the protein, intake for the eggs, I've got some egg whites as well, and I'll have, be having some sliced salmon for my breakfast, and then some salmon for my dinner. And then for carbohydrate sources, keep things pretty basic. Jasmine rice sits really well with me. I think jasmine rice is a fantastic carb source for, for digestion anyway, if you don't have any issues. Got some linguine for dinners, some cocoa pops. Again, any rice-based cereals, rice, crispy square bars, they sit really well with me and they're fantastic to get your carbohydrates in if you are struggling. Got some oats for breakfast as well, add some sourdough, and then fruit kind of falls into that category. So a big, big uh, uptake of fruit. We've got pineapple, kiwi, strawberry, and banana are my main sources. And uh, then in terms of fats, peanut butters, love a good peanut butter. Walnuts are fantastic. I picked up some really good olive oil in Italy. So just, you know, a, a really easy, simple way to get in some good fats as well, if you are struggling. And we think things like cacao powder, fantastic prebiotic as well. Sauces for the pasta, going red pesto. And we've got some kefir in the morning. And that's pretty much it. We will be doing like a full day of eating, but this is just to, to highlight. Got some spinach and rocket over there, as well as some lettuce for my salad bits. Tends to see a lot better, I think anyone suffering from colitis or digestive issues, you chuck in some broccoli, mate, it's not good. I remember trying broccoli when it was like, it was bad, not good, but the salad bits, the bananas, the pineapple, the kiwis, the strawberries, blueberries, they've been very, very good for me, sitting very well and have had very minimal, if any, symptoms in the last, I'd say, couple of weeks, bar obviously Italy being, being the anomaly there, but that's obviously because of the food. It was a bit unsettling, but we've, we've been good since we get back. I am now gonna have some breakfast and then first session. First session of the, of the new block. Look at that, look, rocking the Roma. Forza Roma. I'm liking the no sponsor. Only downside, Adidas. Mm. It's all right, we'll roll with it. It's giving Spain vibes. I like it. We're gonna wrap this episode. I've got a medium, by the way. I've got a last what size I've got. Medium, a little snug. I like it. I'm 81.6 key now. 
feeling nicer in a medium. I'm going to finish this episode with some education. I'm sat here armed with my DEXA scan UK results. We're now going to interpret that data into the body composition calculator. If you don't have this, you can still use their calculator. So when you are faced with this screen, do you have a body scan DEXA report? Simply click no. This might be quite interesting actually to see the discrepancy between a DEXA scan or not. So sex, male, age 29, closing in on that 30. October, got a couple more months left. Weight is 81.6, and then my height is 178. So there we go. Resting metabolic rate is 1,789 calories. Let's now compare that to what we would get off the back of a DEXA scan. So height, 178. My bone mass is on the other page, which is 3.2. My total fat mass is 13.8. And my total lean mass is 64.9. So there we go. 1,772 calories versus 789. So what's that? Quick maths. What is it? 18 or so calories? 10 to 20 calorie difference between not having a DEXA scan and having a DEXA scan. What is your resting metabolic rate or your BMR? That is the amount of calories that I would burn if I were to simply lay in bed all day. Heaven that, didn't it? Imagine spending 24 hours in bed. Lovely. So that is the amount of calories that my brain, my heart, my internal vital organs would require simply for me to survive, okay? 1,772 calories. What we then do to find out our maintenance, and I say maintenance like that because it's very hard to determine a person's maintenance. There's always gonna be fluctuations and variations in everyone's day to day. So try not to be too fixated on like, oh, I'm stressing out, I must find my maintenance. We can try as best as possible to keep certain variables like steps consistent. So when a client signs up with me, we say to that client, right, let's, in order to try and build a, a bigger picture as possible, let's try and keep your steps at say 8K per day. Okay, so regardless if that person gets home from work and they've only done six, I'll say to them, right, go outside after dinner and do 2K steps, just so that within the first two weeks working together, we can get as accurate as possible with that. Okay, feel free to use activity multipliers. I tend to be a little bit more conservative with my activity multipliers for myself and clients as well. I don't really use activity multipliers when clients start with me. We simply use the first two weeks once I've set them some calories to start to find out what their intake is. So if they on the client consult, as an example, say I'm currently consuming 20, 2,500 calories, I might say to them, right, within the first week or two, let's not change anything. Let's just see where your scale weight goes in those 14 days not changing anything, do their daily, do their daily weigh-ins, try and keep their steps nice and consistent. And if their weight holds in around about that 82 as an example, we've pretty much found our maintenance. And then we can go from there. Is this person dieting? Let's go into a deficit. How aggressive do we want to go? Is this person in gain phase? Do we now go into a surplus? If you'd like to use a calculator, then feel free. On the body scan, you've got sedentary, so little to no exercise, light activity, moderate activity, very active. So let's use myself as an example, someone who trains four to five times per week. Once you've clicked that, it will then churn up my maintenance calories at around about 2,700. So 2,747 calories based on this calculator is the amount of calories that I would require to maintain that 81.6. Equally, I really like Eric Helms's way. So when we were working on the SBS, the Shredded by Science Academy, when we filmed Eric, he had determined the maintenance by giving ranges. So sedentary plus three to six days of, of weightlifting. All of these are three to six days of weightlifting. And then you go sedentary, lightly active, active, very active. So what you'd essentially do is you'd multiply the figure that we've got here 1,772 by either one of these calculations and you work within ranges. So if you're quite sedentary, office job, not very active, you can check, you can multiply that 1,700 calories by 1.3 to 1.6. If you're someone that's slightly active, active and so on and so on. So you can use that as a, as a good guide. I, I would recommend you go between the both. I'll link this video, it's a really good video. Eric Helms is a, is a god when it comes down to uh, the SBS Academy. But like I said, what I'm simply gonna do moving forward because I've spent a fair amount of time in a deficit, I think from March, 
calories all over the place, spent a month in IB for us up and down. I've probably been consuming prior to me now going to this gaining phase, anywhere between lowest 1800 calories up to maybe like 2200. So what I'm not gonna do, which is what we're kind of prescribed to do in the industry is BMR, times of activity, and add on 500 calories. What that would probably do is put me into a super surplus and I'll start to accrue far more fat mass. I'm gonna be quite conservative in this rate and all I'm gonna do is have that 2,700 calories or 2,800 calories per day over these next couple of weeks and see where my scale weight goes. I may be in a position where I start to eat that 2,700 calories and my scale weight starts to increase within that first week or two. Happy days. I'd rather that happen than me go, right, maintenance 2,700, I'm gonna do the typical bodybuilding thing and add on 500 calories for my surplus or minus 500 calories for for my deficit. I'm simply gonna work out my macros off the back of that, which will more than likely be 160 protein, 350 carb and 80 fat, and simply just hammer away over these next couple of weeks, track my scale weight on the OneFit app, and then we'll go from there. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. Just wanted to give a little insight into the methodology as to what I do and also what I do with my clients as well. But feel free to have a little play on the DEXA scan or work out using Eric Helms' method for your maintenance. Equally, feel free to go to Bodyscan UK. There's a couple in London, always good. If my clients have the ability to do so, it's always nice to get some baseline figures as it is with blood work as well. It's always nice to kind of get the two together. Right, I'm gonna leave it there. Hope you enjoyed this first episode of Mass Tiempo. Next up, we've got a couple of sessions with IFBB Joe Brightman, and then we've got a full day of eating with ulcerative colitis, a little bit different. Okay. I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching this episode. Thank you, good night. Much love. Forza Roma.